Hi, welcome to another episode of Atkins Diet Misconceptions. My name is, of course, Kent Holtzman, and this week's episode comes out of comment from one of my viewers. And the viewer had tried Atkins Diet, but had a number of, of questions regarding it, specifically regarding uh, kidney stones and uh, diabetes. And her assertion was that Atkins Diet may put diabetes into a latency, that you may be a latent diabetic, that you might not be taking medication, but immediately after you start eating carbohydrates again, you would immediately be required to take insulin again. It was her assertion that a ketogenic diet, one filled with animal fat, increased one's insulin resistance, i.e. made their diabetes worse rather than made it better. And the only they were treating the symptom by eliminating the carbohydrates, but it didn't eliminate the diet. I pointed to a number of different articles in which pointed to the exact opposite and I'll link those in the comment section below. However, I want to I provided her analogy that I thought other people might appreciate as well. And I use the, the cattle confinement yard that we have a number around here in Iowa. And if you've ever been around one, you can obviously tell they're the most pronounced thing about them is the smell. You drive by it and you immediately get the smell of the cattle, of the manure in Iowa, they call that the smell of money. You know what? Money or not, it's not very pleasant. So, what do you do when you go by there? You plug your nose, you stop, you close your mouth, you stop breathing for a while as you pass the, the cattle confinement yard or the hog pens. All right. Well, imagine that smell is insulin. All right. So, you, you, you sit in that confinement yard for a while. You get really desensitized to the smell. You, the smell has to get worse and worse the level of carbohydrates would have to get worse and worse before the insulin would actually be able to take effect. Your body's resisting the smell, resisting the, the noxious odors, and um, becoming uh, resistant to it. All right, so given that as being the diabetic as being someone who can work in the cattle confinement yards and not even be bothered by the smell anymore. All right, so how do you take that person and make him sensitive to the smell? Well, the Atkins diet approach takes him out of the environment and puts them, puts them in a park-like setting. No smells of any sort. Uh, everything is, the amount of noxious odors is very small. So the nose gets re-aware, resensitized to everything that might have happened. You put them back in the situation again, and what happens? Does he has to, is he still his desensitized self? Is he just going to, wow, it doesn't smell too bad in this cattle yard anymore. No, he's immediately going to snap and say, ooh, what's that smell? He's going to know that, hey, this stuff is, I need to do something because this noxious odor is hitting me. All right, so that's one, ad, that's one answer. Well, she said, well, vegans have, I know a number of examples where vegans were able to be uh, cured of their diabetes too. And I said, well, that's fine. That's fine and dandy. Um, that they could do it. Imagine that instead of putting them in park-like settings, they went into a laboratory or a convent in which there's very strict rules on smells. Work with me here. And so they stopped taking in, being assaulted by all the manure smells by having strict rules about smells. You can only do certain things in a certain time frame. And of course, they got resensitized too. But you put them back in there, and guess what? They snap and say, oh, my, what's that smell? And they close their mouth and plug their nose. The point is, which do you want to be in? Do you want to be in a strict rules, legitimate environment, in which you're prevented from doing a number of different things? Or do you want to be in a ketogenic diet, in which it's a park-like setting, where it's basically write your own story. Write what you want to eat, write what works with you, and go do that. Most of those raw vegans that this person spoke of no longer consume the high fructose corn syrup or the high levels of raw refined sugars or the refined starches that they used to and are once again resensitized to the smell, i.e. resensitized to the carbohydrates and insulin uh, sensitivity is built back up. In the end, both ways work. Figure out which way works best with your mindset, which way works best with, best with what you, how you want to live, and go follow that pattern. 
And if you have any further questions, watch my other two diabetic videos in why the Atkins diet and ketogenic diets in general are so successful in, in treating diabetes. And in this one specifically, I'll put links below on uh, that insulin resistance does indeed decrease on uh, after following a low carb diet for just a very short period of time. And why some of the most notable diabetic researchers like Richard Bernstein or Mary Ross Vernon suggest the diet, Atkins diet approach. Talk to you guys later. Bye.